been asked to talk a little bit about my personal experience in terms of being um, a young woman in Parliament. Um, it's, it's interesting. Um, at the time of my appointment to, to office, as I said, I was the youngest person ever elected to, a, to an Australian Parliament nationwide. I've since lost that and become the youngest female because there has been a young man elected at the federal level who's roughly a year younger than I am. Uh, I think, damn those kids. Um, <laughs> uh, so I, I am the youngest woman. It's certainly uh, an interesting experience. I think one of the um, very first phone calls that my office received, it would have been in the first fortnight of my being in office was this lovely elderly lady that called up my assistant and she said, now I love Kelly, could you tell her I love her, I really admire her, I think she's great, but could she please wear longer dresses? You know, um, uh, uh, and you know, it was still happen occasionally that we'll get the course. Why don't you dress like other politicians? It's like, because I'm not a 50 year old man. <laughs> what, what, do you, what, what do you want me to do? Like, there's not a lot I can do about that. Um, but then, on the other hand, if, if you know, on the occasions that I do, you know, maybe dress a little more, I guess what you might call conservative or suity or whatever, you'll, you'll get people that call up and say, "What's happened to you? What have they done to you?" <laughs> so you, you can't, um, you you really you really can't um, win that kind of argument. And um, uh, it's 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 interesting because um, obviously a lot of people have. A certain perception of people in office to begin with, and I think in some ways it, that is multiplied or exacerbated by my age because they're like, oh, you've you've been in office since you were 21, you don't know what it's like to live in the real world, and etc. Cetera, et cetera. And I find that such a strange argument because I'm sure you know starving children in, in Ethiopia would say we don't know what it's like to live in the real world either, but it doesn't mean that we don't have real life experience and um, uh, you know op opinions and. Um, you know, that, that that matter and that can make a difference to our particular situation. And at the end of the day, you know, my, my job in office is, is not to relate uh, intimately to every single person that I deal with because that is literally impossible. I can't be a man and a woman and young and elderly and, you know, have children and not have children. It's, um, so, you know, I, I think that the, the key, one of the key things from my position is empathy and the ability to actually listen to people and appreciate that um, they, every, every individual has varying needs and, and those needs can change at any one time. And so to always keep an open mind about um, people's needs and how variable they are and to represent um, not only their needs but the greater good as best as I can.